Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Virtual Academy series of sessions on ITIL for IT professionals. My name is Nathan Lesnowski. I'm an architect and director of infrastructure concurrency. And I'm going to be working with you over the next series of sessions to walk through how ITIL will practically implement in your organization and how it will impact your daily life. We are taking this approach to ITIL in a very practical way. We're not just focusing on talking about this term or that term. We're focusing on how ITIL is a very pragmatic discipline that's going to impact how you do business. We're going to focus on the question of why is it important to you as an IT professional in the field? We're not focusing in this session just on how do I go and pass the ITIL Foundations exam. What we're really focused on is how is this going to impact me as an individual trying to do a better job of delivering IT services to my customers in the business who are asking me for assistance with their business needs. I'm also going to be showing you a little bit how you can use Microsoft tools to be able to implement these same practices. So when we're working with ITIL, we're not just talking about a framework that's sitting in a book and sitting in our heads. We're talking about something that's really going to impact the way we deliver services to our customers. So through this series of sessions, you're going to find out a lot of ways that are very practical as to how you can bring about business benefit to your customers and how you can improve the quality through what you deliver to your customers. So we're going to start off with just an introduction to the ITIL framework. We're going to go at this like you've never heard it about ITIL before. We'll talk about exactly what it is and why it's going to impact the way you deliver. So before we even start that, take a step back. You may have heard the ITIL term before, you may have heard about Microsoft Operations Framework. What we're going to start with is reimagining how you deliver IT. Don't just think about ITIL as a mechanism to manage things that are broken. Don't just think about ITIL as a mechanism to manage change. Think about it as a way to reimagine how you deliver IT services to your customers. If you had to start from scratch and you had to do IT in a spectacular way, how would you deliver? That's what ITIL is all about. We want to improve the way we deliver service. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is to come out of each session with at least one idea of how you can practically change your business. No matter where you're at in your business, if you're an individual who's helping people in the field with their individual desktop or device issues, or you're a person who's making business decisions at the CIO level, I want to see you come out of these sessions with one idea we're able to go to those individuals and say, here's how I'm going to make what we deliver from IT better. So what is ITIL? ITIL is a framework about delivering better quality and better consistency around IT services to our customers. What's an IT service? A service is anything that I deliver to my customers. So the reason why we have jobs in IT is because we deliver something to our customers that they need from us. Our businesses rely on us to be able to deliver capabilities to them that allow them to sell a product or allows them to be able to be more efficient in how they deliver IT services or allows them to understand what they deliver or manage risk. They look to us to deliver these capabilities that they can use to sell a product or interact with their customers. ITIL is about how do I make that delivery of services to my customers better? How do I set expectations with my customers? How do I deliver quality to my customers? How do I make it consistent with the expectations that I set? So if an individual calls into my service desk and they have something which is presently preventing them from serving their customers, something that's preventing them from working, do they know how quickly I'm going to be able to serve that issue? Or am I kind of leaving them in a black hole of how I'm going to serve them? We want to focus on setting expectations and delivering consistency. And ITIL is about understanding that framework of delivering IT services in a holistic way. We're also going to focus on continuous improvement. ITIL is very interested in this idea of taking the things that we deliver, understanding it as a current state, and then continuing to improve that cycle by cycle. That's something that came about throughout the ITIL life cycle as, your, as it was developed. So, to kind of give you a little bit of history, ITIL was developed by the British government. And when it was originally released throughout its initial versions, it focused very heavily on operational processes. 
and it was very straight line. So when you looked at things like incident management and problem management, service request management, change management, these functions of IT were built out within the ITIL framework. Very recently, a newer version of ITIL was released, which built in a continuous service improvement model, which says, not only are we interested in operational processes, but we're also interested in the feedback loop of how these work processes feed into getting better at IT. So as we walk through these processes throughout these series of sessions, you're going to see how ITIL is focused not only on keeping the lights on, but also determining what kind of lights we want to put in. We're also going to be talking a little bit about Microsoft Operations Framework. The Microsoft Operations Framework is an augmentation of ITIL. It's not different than ITIL so much as it is taking the ITIL framework and then augmenting it with different cyclical functions that allow for me to be able to deliver better at IT. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit as well. So let's jump in. First, where do we want to improve? What are the five ways that we can do that? ITIL is broken up into five key stages in its cyclical design. But when we really talk about it, we don't even have to consider it as an ITIL stage. What we really need to consider is, what are we trying to do? How are we trying to get better? So let's walk through these piece by piece. The first thing we're really interested in is, what do we even want to deliver? So if you were starting a company from scratch, there's a certain quantity of things that you're going to deliver to your customers. You're probably going to deliver to them device services, maybe email services, maybe uh, instant messaging services, maybe the ability for customers to see information about your company, like marketing services. There's a set of things that you're going to do to make your company successful. And as your company asks you to help them deliver services to their customers better, they're going to ask you for more things. So they might ask you for an ability for my customers to order through my public website, or an ability for me to be able to be out in the field with an application on a tablet for my salespeople to be able to receive orders from my customers. They're going to talk about what do we want to deliver. Well, every time we deliver something, we have to operate it, we have to support it, we have to fix it when it's broken, we have to be able to augment its existing functionality with new functionality, we have to be able to release that new functionality into the field properly. So all these other pieces are about how do we actually deliver on what we're trying, thinking about delivering. So as we move beyond simply the idea that I want to deliver something and the value of delivering it, we're going to start talking about how do we design that thing? So if I'm interested in the idea of delivering a function to my customers, how do I then design the delivery of the function of that to my customers? So for example, if I'm delivering an application that allows for my customers to order something from me, should I, where should I host that? Should I host it in the cloud? Should I host it on-premise? Should I have a, a direct billing model or should I bill from my accounts, my accounts department? How should I interact with that application? How should I deliver new releases of that application? How do I support it? All those design questions need to be answered, and they need to be answered in a way which allows me to be able to support it. So design is a very important part of the ITIL framework. Then we move into something called transition, the idea of taking something that I know I want to deliver it. I know I want to deliver a customer ordering application. I've designed it. I want to put it in the cloud. I want someone to be able to access it in a scalable way. But now I need to deploy it into production. How do I do that? Do I have a change management process, or do I just deploy it whenever I feel like it? Transition is all about managing the introduction of change into my operational environment. That Managing that introduction allows for me to maintain my service level agreements, because then instead of just performing changes whenever I felt like it, and then receiving the result of those changes whenever I felt like it, Managing those changes in a structured way allows me to maximize availability and limit mistakes. Finally, we move into operations. Once the service, this new service that I built around customer ordering, has been deployed into operations, I need to fix it when it's broken. I need to receive complaints about the service from my customers. I need to be able to receive service requests, like a new customer who needs to be spun up into the application for them to access their customer records. So the operations process allows for me to be able to support that application. That's really what, when people first think about ITIL, they don't think about these first individual functions. What they start thinking about is operations. 
And this is hopefully showing you that ITIL is much more than simply keeping the lights on in the operation space. It's more so about also determining what is it I even want to deliver and how does it move from determining that I want to deliver it through the design of that thing, moving it into production, and then operating it. And then finally, we sort of have this rinse, rinse and repeat cycle where after it's in operations, we receive feedback from our customers and we start the whole cycle again. Now, throughout all these, this may seem like a real sort of heady concept, but overall, inside each of these individual stages, we're able to articulate how no matter where you live in this life cycle, there's going to be things that you're going to be able to do better. I'm going to give you an example. So, for example, what are some questions I could be asking myself around these service, these, these service areas, these, these structures? Strategy. Let's start there. Do I know what I want to deliver to the business? Am I delivering the right things to the business? It's a question that you could ask yourself. The design is, can I reconcile my choices? So for example, let's say I'm delivering email to my customers. Can I reconcile the choice behind going on premise or going to the cloud? Do I know what it costs to deliver it on premise? Or do I know what it costs to deliver in the cloud? Which is better suited for my business? In a lot of businesses, people are just guessing. They really don't know because they don't have the inputs necessary to make an educated decision. They're just sort of determining a choice based upon a small fraction of the information that could be available to them. We want to increase that information so we can reconcile the choices that we make against what's best for my business. Transition is, how did the last service pack go in your business? When you deployed service pack one of whatever application that is, how did that application go? Did it take the application down? Or was it something that was applied in a structured way? Or is it something that was just applied one evening, one afternoon, and then you had a significant disaster tied to it? A lot of people can share stories of how things like service packs and patches have negatively impacted their business and how they can protect against those disasters by building in QA environments and testing processes. Transition is all about managing that introduction to change. Operations is all about how do my customers know what to expect from me. So if they call up the service desk, do they know what to expect? Do they know when I'm going to be able to help them? Am I properly setting expectations between things that are broken and things that are new? So when I'm considering the ITIL framework and how it can impact my business, these practical questions allow me to be able to determine areas that I can focus on. So if you're finding that your customers don't know what to expect from you, operations may be a big area. However, if you have no idea what you deliver to the business because you don't have a list of business services that you've articulated, that may be a great place to start. So you can even show the business what you do on a daily basis. And then finally, do you have a feedback program to allow you to check against how you're doing, against your expectations, and against what you deliver to the business. If we were to take an example of email, we could say something like, do we want or need to deliver email? Clearly, we need to deliver email. We're not really going to get away without doing that. The question that we talked about earlier, same here, do we need to use on-premise or cloud for our topology? How do I reconcile that? How do I not disrupt my users when I dis dis migrate them to the cloud? Or I migrate them from one version of on-premise exchange to a new version of on-premise exchange? And then finally, how do I maintain the uptime that I'm promising to my business users? So if I'm saying, look, I can deploy on-premise, and I should deploy on-premise for this particular reason, am I going to get the same kind of uptime that I would have gotten if I moved to the cloud? That's something that you need to reconcile in the operational space. And how do I maintain that and help my users? All right. This ultimately is not a one-time thing. It's not a process that we do once, we look at once, and then we put it to the side. What we're always trying to do is we're trying to use two components. We're trying to have a measurement and a control. So you'll see me mention a lot of these things throughout our conversations because the idea of a measurement allows me to set expectations. It allows me to set expectations for everybody. So if I say when an individual calls up on the phone that because of the criticality of your work that I'm going to be able to serve you within a two-hour window versus a two-day window, 
they're going to understand an aspect of that. Or if I said, your goal as a service desk individual is to help people who have critical incidents first, and that's how I'm going to measure you. If you fail at that metric, I don't care what you did at the less critical incidents. The critical incidents is what I'm most interested in before we judge anything else. It's going to allow you to start setting these goals for yourself. If you're setting measurements around application availability, like the SLA that you're getting out of your exchange system or your customer ordering application, those measurements allow you to then build controls to help manage that. So for example, if I'm trying to achieve a 99.9% .9 availability out of my customer ordering application, the controls around that allow me to be able to maintain it. Sometimes people say, you know, Nate, what's the best way for me to be able to deliver high availability from my customer ordering application? It comes up a lot. I'll say one of the best things that you should do is not to build out just a high availability platform. It's to build out appropriate change controls because change controls protect us from the most likely disasters, which are usually application incompatibilities, patch issues, failures of deployments. Most of the disasters are self-caused. So controls allow us to be able to manage those self-caused self modifications rather than having them simply happen to us. As we go through our conversations, I'm going to be talking about Microsoft tools. The key Microsoft tools we're going to be talking about are System Center and the cloud-based management story. So System Center, as a tool set, is built to manage end-to-end -end IT. It's built to manage from the end desktop, the physical desktop, all the way up to the most complicated IT management process and everything in between. Microsoft's cloud story interacts with that tool set. So Microsoft's cloud story facilitates the ability for me to be able to use cloud resources to deliver my applications and even host pieces of System Center in the cloud, but also manage IT whether it's in the cloud or not. Management capabilities facilitate the management of an entirely cloud-centric platform or an entirely on-premise platform or a hybrid in between. So this is going to be something which is going to be relevant to almost every business. All right, next steps. Some practical questions to ask yourself before our next session. How am I doing at those five processes? So for example, do I know what I deliver to the business? Do I know how I design what I deliver to the business? Do I know how I operate those services I deliver to the business and how they got to operation? How do I transition them to a place where I'm operating them? And do I check? Do I have a process to review metrics or do I even have metrics that I know exist? Am I just operating in a firefighting, hair on fire kind of mode, or am I operating in a way which is more structured? It allows for me to be able to dig into IT in a very effective way. Also, where do I have the most influence to, to enact change? Am I living largely within the operational space? And if I am, let's look at those areas where in the operational space, you're then able to interact new change. You're able to bring new change to that process. And maybe from that process, bring it to some of the other processes. Also, because one of our next discussions will be on service strategy, I want you to think about, can I name my top five services? Can I name the top five things that I deliver to my customers in the business that if they said, if these things are down, I don't make money anymore? And finally, does my technology help me execute on these IT service management deliverables? So clearly we're interested in not just talking about processes, but also talking about how those processes are implemented in a tool set. And that's something that we're going to be talking about here is does the technology that I'm using today implement any of these services properly or should I be considering a different way of delivering them? Next time, we'll be talking about service strategy, the first major process, and we'll also then be talking about how do we deliver something that our customers really want. It's been a great opportunity talking to you today. Thank you for the time. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time on the Microsoft Virtual Academy.